Hello friends, this is uh, Dr. Sunil Mahagavkar, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering Department, Government Polytechnic, Mumbai. So far up till now we have studied the introduction to the design of machine elements. In that we have covered total what are the different types of stress induced in the materials and then the theories of failures and the other parts which are concerned related to the introduction to the design of machine elements. So now today we are going to uh, I am going to take you the it is a uh, model number 13 it is on design of knuckle joint. So in this we will uh, have this just I will we will open the slideshow here I will uh, show the part. Okay. So design of knuckle joint in that uh, we are going to learn that is uh, what is a knuckle joint. It is a joint is nothing but uh, there are two types one is the temporary and the other one is the permanent. So the knuckle joint, quarter joint and turnbuckle. So these joints it comes under temporary joints. So in that we can uh, uh, detach that one so without having any destruction on the material say for example if you take a riveted joint it's a permanent joint right so that means if i want to remove that uh, joint from that two plates so you have to chip out the rivets so knuckle joints are the quarter joints so these are a temporary joints just like a clamping two plates by means of bolt and nut it is a temporary joint so like this just uh, joint knuckle joint it is a, just like a pin joint okay so the quarter joint and the other joints we will go further with the other classes so in this class today we are going to uh, design or to know about what is knuckle joint it is nothing but any pin joint in a mechanism it turns out to be a knuckle joint so types of joints you are uh, studying the types of joints and then the applications of the knuckle joints where you receive so the materials generally we are using steel or mild steels wherever the allowable uh, allied steels if it is having uh, highly uh, where that uh, joint is uh, needed in that case sometimes we are using allied steels so and then the last one is uh, phase is how to design a knuckle joint so that we will discuss the knuckle joints are used to connect two links in a mechanism so you might have learnt already what is a slider kind of mechanism for bar mechanism so the pin joints which are uh, maintaining in the two bars so it allows uh, or that is it allows the rotation motion whereas it will transmit the forces like either uh, tensile or compressive forces so any pin joint in a mechanism it's a knuckle joint so for example the sprocket uh, in the chain the chain links they are made up of uh, the pin joint so these joints are used to connect two members whose axis are in one line whose axis are in one line are intersecting and actually there's they should be in a plane that means uh, in a, only that plane it will have a rotational or oscillator motions you are getting so in that type of uh, joints we are using uh, pin joint right so the joints are used to transfer the tensile or compressive forces 
so this joint it is uh, totally designed based on either tensile or compressive okay so it is not designed to join two shafts so shaft is different shaft is one which transfers the torque right so there we are designing the shaft or that the joining part this is a coupling coupling is a part which transfers from one shaft to another shaft it also joins the two shafts but that is not a knuckle joint where the shaft which is joined from suppose you take a is one shaft and b is another shaft and if they are coaxial if i want to connect these two shafts so what is the shaft as i said it is a power transmission from one shaft to the uh, it is a, a it is used to transmit the power so power means either uh, power or you can take a torque right if anything it transfers torque it is called power transmission so uh, knuckle joints are used to it is not uh, designed based on uh, the power transmission or the torque transmission it is mainly used to transmit the motion so when you want to have the motion so certainly we are going to apply the tensile or compressive forces are you getting it so in four bar mechanism if uh, o oa ab is the oa is one link kb is the another link and then uh, bc uh, is the third link and the fixed one is uh, that uh, o and uh, c is a fixed link in that case if oa is uh, having a rotary motion so then this rotary motion is transferred to the connecting uh, link that is ab right so either it will have a translatory motion that is a oscillatory oscillation motion like that so that means some forces it acts on that link right so that force either it may be a tensile say for example if you are connecting a piston with uh, uh, the cross light by means of a bar so that is known as piston rod so this piston rod it is used to connect the piston say piston you are knowing it there is a cylinder right in the cylinder there is a piston so that moves uh, that, that will have a translatory motion so if you want to get this i want to convert it translatory motion into the rotary motion of the crank in order to get one so i had to first of all this translatory motion it is transferred to the first um, the uh, one part that is the sliding block on the, uh, the there it is connected with the piston rod right so the piston rod it is rigidly connected with the piston as well as the cross light the cross light will also reciprocate whatever the piston movement is there from top dead center to the bottom dead center same way the cross light will also move with the same distance from this point to the another point like that are you getting it so uh, this transfer of, uh, of forces so what you are getting it is um, due to the joint which is made by the pin joint so what it transfers when it is transferring so it is not a tensile it will be a compressive force right so this will try to uh, uh, slide the block and this sliding motion of the block is converted to the oscillatory motion through the connecting rod and then to the crank so thereby you are going to have this uh, oscillatory motion is connected it is converted to the rotary motion right so like this these joints are uh, the pin joints which are used at the bigger end that is the crank and the connecting rod where it connects so that is also a knuckle joint right so these are the uh, things uh, this is the end of a link so the figure which is shown here it is uh, taken the end of a link right so this is the end of the link this is portion is called i and this portion is called fork right 
and uh, I had to take uh, I had to take this I and I had to get it fit into this one. It's a fork. And here, in order to get a joint between the two things, so I had to insert a pin here. And after inserting a pin to lock that pin, I had to take a collar, right? And the collar is uh, has got a hole as well as the pin is also got a hole. And uh, through this, I can insert a taper pin. So to lock the pin so that uh, during the time of uh, the movement or the motions, the pin will should not come out from the joint, right? So this is the way we are making the forms. This is actually these are forged part. The ends are means by means of forging operation. And then the surface uh, that uh, the rest of the portions are uh, face milling or the facing drilling it is done as per the requirement of the production sheet so, okay so the it depends upon the things that uh, how you are going to get it that is the finished products so that also the designer should give what type of finishing you need to have between the uh, pin and the hole of the fork and the surface of the hole here we, we need to have a smoother uh, surface finish and later on this part if you want to have this end rods so here we do not have that much of uh, this one so you should not waste uh, much more uh, quality should not increase the quality here because the cost will unnecessarily increase right so either sometimes you can get a round shape here instead of making uh, uh, octagonal uh, heads like this Okay, so it depends uh, depending upon the use of that one we can uh, have these portions. Okay, so there are four links, uh, four parts are there. One is the eye and this is the fork and then the pin and uh, the collar is there and the taper pin right to lock this pin from here. Okay, so now the applications, as I said, it it can it is used in a chain of a chain joint, or else uh, you can have this one that is a applic other applications are uh, liver safety valve. So the liver safety valve where we are using it, so that liver safety valve mechanism. So pin at the fulcrum so it is a type of knuckle joint right so many more applications you can get it so now let us we will go for design uh, steps which are used in the knuckle joint so first thing we will go for a fork so the end of this one this is the fork right so this part which uh, I have told you so this part this is the end part of this one that means the diameter d if d is the diameter of this end it is uh, subjected to the tensile it is subjected to the tensile force so the failure is the tensile failure in the rod end okay so the fork rod end or the I rod end is mainly designed based on tensile failure. Are you getting it? So this tensile failure is perpendicular to the applied load. If D is the diameter, so then, then pi D square by 4 is the resisting area multiplied by stress is equal to the internal resistance. And if you equate it with the applied load P, so then we can calculate what is the diameter. So now we will go for the, as I said, design of the rod end. If D is the diameter of the rod end, either of the fork or you can take the, it is the end of uh, the I. If D is the diameter, so then, I can get the resisting area of that. 
let us say you can take uh, sigma t is allowable tensile stress so since as i shown here the subject to the p and this is, since this joint in the middle portion there is an i will be there and the pin will be there so due to this uh, junction so when you um, put the force on the i so here you will get p by 2 and p by 2 forces will be there you are going to get it and this resultant uh, failure if it is a poor in tensile so it may fail uh, perpendicular to the applied load so that is called tensile failure okay so the applied load p is equal to on the internal strength which is nothing but internal resisting strength or resisting strength you can say simply so that is equal to the resisting area multiplied by permissible stress or induced stress so resisting area as if d is the diameter so then pi d square by 4 is the resisting area so if d is the diameter here you will get pi d square by 4 so into sigma t if i do it so what you will get the applied load so this from this i can calculate what is the diameter of the rod end okay so this fork rod end or it is equal to the i rod end both one and say so uh, in designing the proportions we are taking some proportions so the i rod end and the both are same as equal to d and if uh, dp is the diameter of the pin so generally we have taken the uh, diameter of the rod is equal to the diameter of the pin which you are going to insert here so it is as per the proportions okay this is uh, i think it is clear to everybody so first we have designed the i rod end and the next one design of the pin based on shear failure so this is the pin we are going to insert in the pin as uh, in the i as well as in the fork right and this pin when it is subjected so just like uh, i am showing you this hand i can make this as an i right so this we can take it as a four and here there's a connection so you try to insert uh, um, pin over here so when you apply the force here so it is here you are going to get the shear at this junction so the pin will be failed in double time that is a uh, one at the top and one at the bottom that is the middle portion which will be retained in the eye whereas in the top and bottom portion it will be retained in the fork so that we can uh, show it here so design of the pin based on shear failure let dp is the diameter of the pin if dp is the diameter of the pin and if tau s pin is the allowable shear stress of the pin material so then the applied load p is equal to the resisting area multiplied by permissible stress or induced stress right so here it is shown here this is as uh, because of the i so it will separate out and you are going to get the failure at the stories right so here we are going to get it's a double shear because uh, double uh, area you are going to have the failure that failure will be in three parts if failure in three parts is there it is called double failure if failure in two parts is there so in this case, it is single shear so so resisting area is equal to twice of pi by 4 into dp square where dp is the diameter of the pin okay so now if tau s is the allowable shear stress so that can be calculated by 0.5 of syt where the yield strength of the pin material divided by the factor of safety you can do it and from that you can calculate what is, what is tau s allowable for the pin right and using this value and the applied load p is equal to twice of pi dp square by 4 into tau s for the pin so from this i can calculate dp so you can calculate dp or as i said if you are knowing the proportions 
what I had taken the proportion? We assumed that the diameter of the rod we have already calculated. If dp is equal to d, if the as per the proportion, what it is says that dp is equal to the d. So that value I had to substitute here. Okay. So if proportion in proportion what it says that dp is equal to d. So in that case, you just put the value of uh, dp is equal to d in this. Uh, and then calculate what is the induced stress, induced stress in the pin. And this induced stress in the pin, it should come less than the allowable stress. Okay. If we are using the proportion, if we know the dimension, designing can also be done by finding the induced shear stress. This should be, this should come less than the allowable shear stress of the pin that is the West pin material. Generally, the diameter of the pin is considered or equal to the diameter of the rod. Is it clear? So, dp is the diameter of the pin. Either you can calculate directly with the shear. It is a best way to use the proportions and just to put that value here, d is equal to dp because d already we have found it. Right? Diameter of the rod uh, we have already found. So, just you put that value and get what is the dp uh, sorry what is the tau s for the pin and uh, this is called the induced stress induced what shear stress this should come less than the allowable this should come less than the allowable so then then only we can say the design is safe suppose in case if this uh, induced stress if it is coming more than the allowable more than the allowable so then you find the diameter dp you find the diameter dp based on the given right based on the allowable stress so now you have to find out dp in the second step i can find out you just put the value of tugless here find dp based on that so that is your final right so there are two way of designing Either if you know the dimensions, you put that value and get the induced stress and that should come less than the allowable or else if you are not getting, if it is coming more than the allowable stress, so in that case, you put the value of the allowable stress and then get the dimensions, right. So now let us, we will go for the third step that is the design of the eye design of the eye based on shear failure so once again just we will uh, look out uh, that is the uh, last one which i have shown here so this figure this is the eye so this part so this failure of the eye now we have designed the diameter of the rod and d okay this diameter d we have found already and uh, we have find the uh, found the diameter of the pin by taking uh, or checked the allowable shear stress of this one right that is the dp diameter that means this inside this is the outside diameter of this pin diameter is equal to the inside diameter of the eye right and uh, now we are uh, designing this portion eye portion of, for this one okay so this one uh, we can have that uh, failure of the eye failure of the eye in shear so there are three failures you are going to get in the eye one is shear failure another one is the tensile failure and the third one is the bearing failure okay so shear failure is as uh, see here the pin is coming out so if the pin is very strong and if i is weak so in that case it will tear out the surface so the direction of force is parallel to the plane so hence you are going to get the shearing of this this is the force see just i will show it once again this
yes so here it will shear out so this surface so one shear you are going to get this area of this much and the second one area also you will get this so actually if you take it so we have to take that is d naught minus di by 2 so it is more than that but it is very difficult to measure the actual area actual length of this from here to here so it is better you can they, uh, they have assumed that this is equal to d minus dp upon 2 so if uh, small d uh, dp is the diameter of the pin and capital d is the diameter of the outside diameter of the eye so then d minus dp you will get this length divided by 2 so that means this thickness you will get it so this thickness it will be we have taken here this is d minus dp upon 2 and b is the uh, thickness of the fork okay so here i can uh, show this one in this uh, here yes just a minute So here, uh, if I draw this, okay, So you can assume this, this part. Okay. So it is subjected to the load P. Right? So here this area. This area. So this area. So the diameter outside diameter is nothing but the capital D right this is the outside diameter inside diameter is DP that is the diameter of the pin so this length is nothing but D minus DP upon 2 and this is the thickness of the I so generally the thickness of the I B is considered as 1.25 times the diameter of the pin. If dp is the diameter of the pin, so this is one area I will get it. Similar area uh, you can get it on this side. Similar area I will I will get on this side. Okay. So that is this area. This is what first one this is the second one that means it is a double shear are you getting it so since the load is parallel to the force so hence it is called shear okay so by doing that if tau is, is the allowable stress and here we have to assume that capital D D is equal to 1.75 and then applied load P is equal to the resisting area into the stress. So the resisting area RA is equal to twice of D minus DP upon 2 into B. So into tau S, if tau S is the allowable shear stress, so 0.5 of SYT upon factor of safety. So B is equal to 1.25 DP. So by putting that value, I can get D or if you know, if you all substitute here, so you find out the West. Okay. So from this, what we can see is that applied load P, which is equal to the shear strength induced in between these surfaces. So that is twice of D minus DP by 2 into B into tau S for the I it is not for the pin so when we are uh, doing it so try to remember these facts so it is the shear failure
so here either i can we can design b because db it is known to you b is also known i can uh, take by considering shear i can get b or else by putting the value b is equal to 1.25 db by putting the value b is equal to 1.25 times the diameter of the pin so in that case i can get what is tau s uh, shear stress allowable shear stress i can get it okay so this is i can take uh, this is twice of dp and I, again dp is equal to d that means uh, 2 oh, d minus d that means uh, d by 2 into 1.25 d into tau s so here again d already we have calculated that if you put it you can get what is the allowable shear stress so allowable shear stress for the i i can find out that is called induced shear stress this should come less than the allowable shear stress and suppose in that case if it is not coming in that case take this value and find b you take dp is equal to d no problem dp is equal to the diameter of the rod and d is equal to twice of d and then taking that value i can find b if tau s uh, induced shear stress is more than the permissible or allowable shear stress is it clear so after this we will go for a design of the i based on tensile so now we have studied a design of i based on shear so now we will go for design of uh, i based on tensile failure so here i can uh, take this so if pin is uh, strong if pin is stronger than the i if pin is stronger than the i so it may separate out like it may separate out that means at the section 1 1 at the section 1 1 see here this area is lesser here it is going to fail at this along the perpendicular to the plane perpendicular to the plane of this thing so that will be teared out so here it will be it is called the tensile failure because the load is perpendicular to the failure if i take the section 1 1 right so here so this area so what is the depth at this point the depth of this point is nothing but the i thickness it is nothing but the thickness of the i so here if b is the uh, depth here if d is the diameter outside diameter dp is the depth so in that case i can uh, have that one failure like this is the area you are going to get right so the same thing i can uh, show it in uh, uh, this uh, way right so this is okay so this is the thickness right so here you will get uh, the sections you can take uh, square and then the rod will be there this rod is subjected to the load p right so when the p is subjected when the, it is connected through the pin isn't it the ultimately the load on the pin it comes on this so here it will fail at this point so at we, this will fail at this section so if i draw this section over here so this section 
it will be you are going to get like this so this is right so this will be separated out so here this area is perpendicular to the applied load hence it is tensile right so this diameter a total diameter what is the diameter here capital d and inside diameter is dp so this is the length p so what is that d minus dp into b it is the net area resisting area so what is the uh, is it tensile or shear it is a tensile so the tensile resisting area is this one if sigma t is the allowable tensile stress of the i material if in case i material is different from the fork and it is different from the pin in that case we have to take the respective uh, allowable tensile stresses for those things right if sigma t is the i is the allowable tensile stress the i material then the applied load p is equal to the resisting area into permissible stress or induced stress in the i which is equal to what is resisting area the i will fail at the tensile section at 1 1 at section 1 1 as shown in here the resisting area of the i will be b into d minus dp right so the hatched area which i have shown here that is the net area which is going to fail in tensile so where d is the outside diameter it is twice of dp and dp is the inside diameter of the i which is equal to the diameter of the rod right and b is equal to 1.25 dp so putting all these values over here b is equal to 1.25 dp d minus dp into tau into sigma t i so what you can get from this uh, we can find the th thickness of the b can be calculated or else you put the value of uh, uh, sigma b over here b everything and d and you can get what is the allowable tensile and that should come less than the so now if you see both uh, the uh, equation for uh, one is the shear and the other one is the bending in case of bending see here in case of bending the last uh, this one I will show it in the this one. Okay. So here if we take that uh, p is equal to okay. oh. so here you just see here p is equal to considering what shear failure so what you will get the diameter is dp outside diameter is d okay so in that case it is d minus dp upon 2 into b there are two areas so hence it should be multiplied with 2 this is the resisting area for the shear into tau s right so what will get the net area is 2 to get cancel out so here it is d minus dp into b into tau 
prowess. It is based on shear. And similarly, based on tensile, what you will get is D minus DP. It is here, this failure. Oh. So here, this failure and this is. This is D and this is DP, right? And this is B. So D minus DP into B into sigma T of I. This is the of I. Right? So this is second equation what we derived. It is just as shown in the PPT. If you compare this equation 1 and 2, what you are getting here, so tau s c for a same material, if it is because i is made up of the same material, for that one, so the i value tau s shear stress is 0 0.5 of syt upon factor of safety, right? Whereas sigma t is generally it is based on the principal stress theory it is syt upon factor of safety so here generally if factor of safety and everything it is same it is what it says that sigma uh, shear stress is generally it is half of the yield strength or you can see 60 percent of yield strength you will get it right so that means tau s is always less than sigma t so when you compare this and this, so which one you prefer for uh, designing the uh, things? We have to check it for the sh lower shear stress. Lower stress. If I compare equation one and two, so tau s shear stress, allowable shear stress is less than allowable tensile. Hence, we have to design the dimensions based on shear rather than based on tensile. So that's why. First, we have to find out the dimensions based on tensile, the based on shear, and then these dimensions you can check it in the tensile for the tensile. Is it clear? So, like this, we have to um, see this. So, whether it should be checked for shear or tensile. So always in designing one thing uh, we have to uh, see it uh, that should uh, always we have to design for lesser value always okay if the equations are same in the left and right side and in that case uh, so the lesser value is allowable shear stress hence uh, we have we are uh, preferring to design in shear rather than tensile okay. So until now we have uh, designed the diameter of the rod in and then uh, by tensile and the shear failure of the pin that is a double shear and the third one shear of the eye and then the tensile failure of the eye. So the other uh, part of the knuckle joint it will be discussed in the upcoming uh, model that is a part two of this knuckle joint thank you